Okay. All right. Sorry about that. Welcome, everybody. It's wonderful to have you here this morning. Um, uh, just a reminder that we will have to mute everyone except me and Mario uh, uh, during the presentation. However, please feel free to type any questions or comments that you have uh, into the chat box at the bottom of your Zoom window, and we will discuss them at the end. Uh, Emily here will be helping me with moderating that. Um, we are doing these virtual events to try to bring the Skyline community closer together so that we can keep ourselves updated with the latest or interesting topics and discoveries, challenges, opportunities for science and conservation, and, or just for the enjoyment of the beautiful region. Um, thank you very much to all of you, to all the supporters and volunteers and everybody that shows up here uh, that keep our program going uh, 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 to protect the diversity of life in the, in the Skyline region. Today, we especially want to thank to the New York Community Trust for the support in our conservation work in Sonora. Um, uh, if you missed any of the previous coffee breaks, you can view them on our website. Uh, I, um, hopefully, Emily can post the link to, to some of the past recordings there. there. Um, I, I don't know if I said this already, but we are recording our event today, just for you, just FYI. Uh, and don't forget to register for our next coffee break on November 12th. We, we will have Antonio Scher also from Profauna and Mario again, and they will be talking on a different, different subject on the San Pedro watershed up in Mexico and Sonora and some of the conservation challenges in, in the region. Uh, well, with that said, I'm, it's, it's a, I'm really excited and it's a pleasure for me to introduce you to Mario Ciret Galan. Uh, an ecologist by profession and naturalist by heart, he grew up in the Sky Islands regions at the mining town of Nacosari in Sonora, in the, um, north, in the northern portion of the state. He worked at the Centro Ecologico de Sonora, working with priority species such as uh, the Mexican spotted owl, uh, wild turkeys, and the tropical migratory birds. Later, he worked 18 years for the, natural, uh, for the Commission of Natural Protected Areas in Mexico, the, uh, the, the Mexican National Park, let's say. In the, in the areas of Revilla Quijedo, in the islands of the Pacific, uh, the Oyoso Reserve of Cabo Pulmo, sorry, the Cabo Pulmo National Park and the, and the uh, Wildlife uh, Protection Reserve of Aviste, Acos Aviste in Sonora. Um, later, he worked for 15 years, uh, uh, nine of, he, he served as director in CONAMP. He has specialized in natural resource management, including actions for restoration, ecosystem fire management, um, and planning and uh, natural protected areas. Uh, and environmental education as well. Uh, currently, he collaborates with greatergood.org, doing wildlife monitoring with camera traps in the Sky Island regions and coordinating Madrid and discovery expeditions in Mexico. With Profauna, he is the ecosystem management coordinator and executes projects for the conservation and management of natural resources and biodiversity, such as the golden eagle, beaver, jaguar, ocelots, black bear, and other important species, um, as well as in collaboration with Sky Island Alliance, Borderland Linkages, and Watershed Management Group. Um, uh, he, Mario ha is one of those persons that he uh, has done so much stuff uh, and in so many different places that he seems older than he is, but he's not that old, I have to say. Uh, he has worked for a long time in the field, so he knows many places and many local uh, landowners and leaders in this beautiful region. As a founding member and current member of the Board of Directors of the Colegio Sonorense, uh, Mario has promoted many initiatives and projects for the conservation of natural resources in the region. Um, so with that, uh, you know, there's much more to say about Mario, but I'm going to let him to tell you uh, uh, these wonderful stories that he has because of all the background, uh, the diverse background that he has in the region and, and elsewhere. But today he's, he's going to be talking about the Sonoran Sky Islands, and we hope you enjoy it. And uh, remember to type your questions during the talk so that we can have a conversation at the end. Mario, thank you very much. Uh, go ahead. Okay, can you hear me well? Hello, good morning, everybody. I just want to uh, try to give you a talk about the Sky Island region in, in, in Sonora, a place that I think is uh, the heaven. I always uh, said that this area is in the house of the gods. I love the, the region. It has uh, too many to, to, to show uh, the confluence uh, between the 
in, in the tropics, uh, the food desert, and uh, then the Arctic from the north, uh, makes this area very rich in biodiversity. You live in the same, the same area in, in your side in the US, in Arizona. Um, you can let me say that something different. Uh, it's supposed that we have 55 sky islands in, in, in the Mexican side, in north, uh, eastern Sonora, northwestern Chihuahua. And some of them uh, reach uh, uh, 2,600 meters, something like, I don't know how many feet. Uh, 18, 8,500 8, uh, feet, more or less. And it, it has a variety of uh, ecosystems that allows a, a huge uh, amount of uh, wildlife species and, and, and of course, flora. This is a, a photo of uh, uh, Cerro La Nevada and Sierra Los Ajos. It's a pine forest uh, in very good uh, health that allowed to have, we have record in this area, also jaguar. So that's a uh, great, is the more, is the higher elevation record for jaguars in, in, in Mexico. It's supposed that they must be in the, in the tropics, in the uh, tropical tourist group. And it, no, you also have it in, 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 this, in the Santa Rita's and I bet that you must have them, uh, this species in, in the Catalinas. Maybe you remember this photo, Bill. This photo is from uh, the Quijolito Canyon in, in Sierra Los Ajos. We're looking uh, northeast. You can see the Magellan Peak at uh, the end. When I was young, uh, I saw my first uh, sugar leaf maple in Gwen Canyon, Sierra La Purica. And I get impressed. I was uh, 11, something like that, when I saw this uh, tree. It's supposed that, that this tree must be in the north of the US or Canada. And wow, I uh, find by myself that we have maple. Once I get my second field guide, the flora of, the, of the Southwestern, I, I get that we have this species, but that happened uh, many years later. Uh, this is a small canyon, Sierra San Luis, called La, Ch La, La, La Chimeneas Canyon. It has huge, uh, uh, I don't know how you call this trace. We call it Pinabeto. And um, it's supposed that it's Arizona, Cypress, something like that. And um, we don't have this species in, in other uh, sky uh, island in, 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 in the region. That's amaz amazing. We get the influence, as I told you, from the Rocky Mountains. So we have uh, in the San Pedro River area, uh, the Rockies mule deer. That is very different to the desert mule deer that uh, is uh, almost twice in, in size. This is the road to Sierra El Tigre, almost reaching to Langostura Dam. Uh, there happened that I must to tell you before, since the beginning, also when I was a child, it's, well, it's very common to, to see bad guys in, in, in all these mountains. In those years, uh, the main drug is supposed to have the marijuana. And then year, uh, following year, the drugs start scaling up until we get uh, trafficking in, in the area instead of grow, growing. 
uh, the trafficking started with cocaine and then uh, followed by heroin and metals and many other things. And for that, sometimes the area is dangerous. Sometimes you're driving or you're hiking and suddenly a, an airplane almost uh, hit your back head with the land gear. And that's happened very, very, very often. When I was in, in Ajo Vista Preserve, that was very common. Sometimes uh, the, the bad guys close the area and say, you can get into the preserve. But OK, no problem. They do, they did the, the, the work, and once they finish it, so we can get in. The same happened as a civil, as a citizen. Uh, many times uh, I've been hiking canyons in several mountains and suddenly, uh oh, you are in, in the middle of a crop of uh, puppies and, or marijuana crops and a guy pointing you with an R15, what are you doing here? Uh, that happened, oh, I'm just, I'm just camping, I'm just hiking and looking for animals. Uh, many people in the area know me in, in the region as the engineer because all the locals think that somebody who works with uh, flora would be a forest engineer. I'm not, I'm an ecologist, but uh, that happened very often. So many people call me like uh, as the engineer or the loco de los animalitos the crazy animal guy, something like that. Uh, because uh, we were telling them, I'm looking for spotted owls. What, owls? No, man, and that happened. Bill Shaw knows about that. He, 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 he was my, my mentor uh, on those years. I'm talking about uh, 1992 to 1995, something like, 96, something like that. And we, uh saw many things in, in in the field and we still also now today if i want to go to the field i must ask for permission to get into uh, say any mountain range recently i went to lampasos which is uh, south from moctezuma in tepache divisaderos area and <clears throat> i must ask for permission to get into a mountain uh, when we were, uh, we went to uh, Mesa de Rios uh, in the Sierra Madre, we must ask permission to the bad guys. What are you going to do? What do you have? Which car? Which license plates? How many people? Give me your names. And that's, that's very, that happened very often. In one occasion, we set up uh, 20, 20 something trail cameras in, in Sierra Huachinera which is between uh, Huachinera town and Mesa de Rios. It's the northern end of Sierra Madre. And I will get the camera without problem. I will show you some photos from that area. Uh, we found the hu a huge uh, number of uh, black bears in the area, many different. In one camera, in, in those 20 cameras, we found at least uh, 27 uh, different individuals there. Uh, we saw cinema faces, black, red. Uh, we, we found a, a female bear with uh, all the back white. That was very, very rare. But anyway, uh, we set the cameras. And when the time passed uh, to, when it was time to come back to change uh, memory cards and batteries, I called a local guy in Huachinera. And in that moment, there was a war. There was a battle, uh, a, a drug cartels, a cartel war between the guy from La Linea in Ciudad Juarez El Paso and the guy from cartel from cartel of Sinaloa. They were fighting in the area and they just told it, don't come, forget it. 
and that have, we must spend eight months until they call me and they say, hey, come come now, now is the moment. Uh, come and quit your cameras and, and that's it. So we went to the area. Uh, there's a place called the Coyote, which is a junction, a highway junction uh, that goes north to Huachinera town or goes south to Bacadegua Chianacorichico. When we were there, we found a, a cartel convoy. Who what they stopped? Uh, they 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 were like I don't know, 17 trucks full of uh, armored guys, uh, R15s, uh, AK47s, uh, 50 caliber. Uh, we think we 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 we're gonna pass away in that moment. Uh, they stopped. They saw us. Uh, my pickup truck, it has a steel structure in the back. It's uh, on the uh, the cab level. So it looked like an artillery position. They think that we were part of a Guardia Nacional. My uh, truck is a Dodge Ram, a crew cab, white truck, but pretty similar to the, to the truck that uh, the Guardia Nacional is using in Mexico. And we just put my hands up, the guy, the girl, we make this and uh, suddenly uh, one of the trucks arrived with us, four guys point us, one with an F-60 R-15 pointing us directly to our heads and what are you doing here? And they saw what we have in the back of the truck. Uh, are you biologists? Yes, sir. We are biologists. Okay. What's your name? And they ask uh, the, our name. They look for license, uh, driving license, and IDs. And okay, fly away. Where are you going? We work to watch Unera to keep uh, the camera. Ah, you're the guy of the cameras. Okay, I want I want to look for the photos if somebody cross on those cameras. Wow. That was amazing. We scared and I didn't come back. Until now, I, I didn't come back to, to Sierra Guachinera. I did it to Mesa de Rio, but as I told you, I must ask for permission. Uh, the region is, uh, you, you have different kinds of mountains. You can be in Sierra Moctezuma, in, you have pines in the top, but the heat over there is, wow, very different to, to Sierra Los Ajos, for example, Sierra El Tigre. Here you, you can see Sierra Buenos Aires in the middle, Sierra Los Ajos at the end, the photo was taken from Sierra La Purica. I call this mountain La Purica, the sacred mountain, La Montaña Sagrada. Why? This is the place where I did my first camp alone. Uh, I was 10 years old, and I was, uh, I started uh, camping with uh, many friends, my family, my brother, and I was scared on, on, on dark. And I say, I need to control that. So I decided for myself to, to camp alone. I spent three days in the top of the mountain. I climbed up in, on Saturday, I come back on, on Sunday with a huge smile. And I tell my dad, I don't care uh, about dark anymore. This is uh, the Nacosari is smelting plant from Sierra La, uh, from Sierra La Purica, from the top of Sierra La Purica. Uh, that was before they put uh, some kind of uh, filters to, to keep the, some gay, some, some fumes, so they now can produce uh, sulfuric acid. Before that, they allow all the smoke to the region. When you're in the field, you have a lot of problems with uh, the roads. Here you can see huge uh, uh, trees that you can move. So you must come back because the roads closed. Now I have a chainsaw in, in, in the back. 
uh, I have axes, I have uh, shovels, picks. Uh, also, I, I used to have uh, five fighting tools. Uh, I had Pulaski's and McLeod's racks to, 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 in case of I have a fire in the field. Sometimes this, this was when, during the uh, started out uh, project, uh, you have problems. In those years, you can do something with, the, with your car if you have a filer. I have a, the carburetor in my hands. I must fix it in, in the middle of nothing. Uh, I fix it and I, we, we could go down to the town to make a major fix. Now you can't. Uh, new cars are uh, high tech, full of uh, technology, full of uh, computers. And also you, you even can get into the, uh, under the capo uh, because it's full of hoses and wires and everything. Sometimes you, you need to, to make a road, you must uh, prepare a dip. If you want to cross, this happened in Sierra Sierra La Madera in Moctezuma. We get a flat tire in the top, but the problem was that our spare tire it was from a four. It for a newer four. It's supposed to dodge a four uh, share the rims in those years in early 90s, but uh, this spire rim, it came from a newer four, so it didn't fit. So I just have a small, teeny, ah, we call it lima, limaton. So we can uh, move through the main hall to make a space. But imagine, we, we spent almost 12 hours trying to get the hole. <laughs> In those years, uh, cell phones didn't exist yet. You can find whatever you want in the field when you're hiking, when you're walking, when you spend a lot of time in the, in, in, in the field, you can find everything. This is the Ajos Nuevos uh, Cemetery. Uh, I put this photo because I, I try to find very new from here is the, the biological station of Ajos Nuevos in, in Sierra Los Ajos. And I want to try what happened there. So I get into a file from history, from the Unison, uh, from the old uh, uh, Carania Consolidated Copper Company files to find what happened there. And I found it. And there are 13 tombs, 13 tumbas, 11 belong to adults that died during an explosion in Najos Nuevos. Najos Nuevos it was a, a log mill. The, the saw works with steam. The guys were getting hot, uh, warm around the, 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 the steam uh, motor. Uh, they were 10, 10 men, 10 men, and one woman. The woman was taking the lunch to her husband. They died. They, they were, ah, they were, yeah. They were 11 died during the explosion. And they would uh, uh, put it there in this uh, cemetery. And the other two tombs belongs to a, uh, 11 years old girl and a seven months boy who died from cold, something like that. And this is the way as I found it, the tombs. Later, we, we, we set uh, crosses and we clean the area and it looks better now. Uh, this is in, in some, sometimes when you're in the field, you must take a, a bath, you know. 
When I was young, we used to, to prepare refuge uh, before we get uh, uh, portable tents. I, I, I get my first tent when I was uh, 11. It was a Hillary, Hillary tent. It was the only brand uh, to get in the commercial uh, market in Tucson. Uh, sometimes when you're in the field, this is a, a guy, Don Jose. He is, uh, he born from Apache parents. Uh, his parents, they were after the, the hunting of Apaches in late 80s, uh, 1897. 1897, 1897, something like that. Uh, the Apaches were wandering in the Sky Island region in, 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 in Sonora until the 50s. And this guy, uh, he was in that moment, when the photo was taken in 1994 in Sierra del Tigre, uh, he was 85. So you can imagine, he is a second generation wandering Apaches in Sonora. He's still there. He he has a kid, but they went to the town. They live in Esqueda already. This guy passed away several years ago. He's still talking Apache. He is uh, in El Huacal. Uh, dam in Nakosari, uh, Cerro La Rasquera in the back. Trying to open a wine bottle with a tool, a carpenter, a carpenter tool. In those years, our backpacks with a steel frame. I'm the guy of the hat with snow. That's in Harazo Ranch uh, near La Purica. Looking for a desert bighorn in the Sierra de los Locos uh, uh, mountain. Sierra Los Locos is just between Opodepe and Aconchi towns. Uh, I hear that somebody found, saw uh, bighorn chips in the, in the area and I, we went to trying to, to find it. We didn't. Sierra Los Locos is very interesting. It's a lower elevation for Mexican spotted owls in, in, in US and, and Mexico. Uh, the record is was just 100 meters above the the Tarns group uh, vegetation. There were some oaks and some pans in the top, but the record it wasn't in the, in the top. It was in, in in the middle part of the mountain. Knowing local local guys in the in the area, during thirty years in, in the field, uh, I've been in, in many many ranches in, in in the area. I can say that I know every Sky Island in in Sonora, and many of the owners and local leaders and local stakeholders. I can show you thousands of photos of uh, wildlife in the region. This guy is called El Chiflido, it's Don Manuel El Chiflido Gonzalez. He passed away many years ago. Uh, this guy uh, used to be the vaquero in El Panduro Ranch in Sierra San Luis. 
this guy in in in, in, in those years it was uh, 78 something like that uh the highway between chihuahua and aguaprieta which crosses uh, puerto san luis it was built during the late 70s. Before that, the road came by, by Paso de Carretas or Cajón de los Embudos, uh, south, uh, southern part, southern end of uh, Sierra San Luis. Uh, in those years, there were some uh, diligencias, uh, something like a stagecoach, something like that pulled by horses. Well, this guy used to, what they call it a chiflido, uh, trying to, to scare the passengers of the diligencias. So the people, the local, until they found it, they call it a chiflido. They do that for many years when he was young. He did that uh, during the 20s and 30s. Uh, also, we used to be communications technicians and the, the guy in the, in the middle of the antenna. This was our antenna in, in, in Sierra uh, Nevada, uh, Cerro La Nevada in, in Sierra Los Ajos. We were trying to, to fix our repeater, our radio repeater, and we must do the, the job. This is in Yecora. When I was young. Also, we used to to get into the sky islands near to the desert, like Sierra El Lumo. Uh, for example, I can tell you, you can get into Sierra El Lumo now. It's very dangerous. It's uh, just southwest from Sasabe, and northwest from Caborca. It's a very dangerous area. This photo is from El Colorado. Uh, Cerro Colorado, crater El Colorado in El Pinacate, El Colorado crater. In those years, it was hard to, to manage the area with uh, two wheel drive trucks. So we use uh, all three wheelers to, to get in, uh, through the Pinacate. I'm here in, you, you know, this area is the Chiricahuas. This is a Sierra del Tigre. At the end, at the bottom, you can see the Babispe River before reach uh, Langostura Dam. This is Cañón del Frijolito. This is a, this is a most recent uh, photo. This is in Sierra Santo Domingo. So the Eastern Nacosari, north end of uh, Sierra La Madera in Moctezuma and Guasabas. Uh, La Chiquita. This was a Weimaraner dog that I get to find uh, cougars or bears when we were in the field. During the Spotted Owl project, I have a encounters with black bears, close encounters with black bears and also with a cougar in one in Sierra Los Ajos, another in Sierra El Tigre. So I decided to, to get a, a dog to, to help us to find any animal in the, in the area when we were hiking, just for protection. And that uh, gave us a, a a dangerous situation in Sierra Elenita, just in Cananea. We were hiking, uh, Andres Villarreal and this guy and, and, and I, we were hiking, looking for spotted owls. And suddenly, La Chiquita started uh, barking. Oh, I tell Andres, Andres, be careful. Get Chiquita because maybe it's a javelin and or a uh, quadi and they're gonna hurt her. They're gonna hurt she or, yeah. And uh, suddenly Andres passed me running and La Chiquita 
on the back. And Andres was uh, trying to say something. And I get the camera, where's the deer, where's the deer? And I follow him and suddenly he, he screamed, a bear! And then I turn back and it, there was a, a huge bear charging us. And I just screamed, don't run! And I get in one of these big trees and I told him, cover you, cover you. And the only thing I have in my hand it was the camera. And I said, well, I was covering with the pine tree and I put the, the camera in my hand and then I said, well, I'm gonna hit the bear, the bear with the camera. And suddenly the, the bear stops. Wow, what's going on? And the bear was uh, uh, making a lot of noises. And suddenly turned the head back several times. I said, what's going on? And then I saw a, a small calf uh, walking down the hill and then get uh, the canyon on the left and go down. And it went, the, the, the female started looking back, looking back, and then fly away. And then I tried to look for Andres and Chiquita. Andres, where are you, Chiquita? And suddenly, Andres is taller than me. I'm 1.75, uh, 78 meters. He is uh, 189. He's tall. And he was behind a small manzanita, a half meter manzanita cover Chiquita and Andres. And like uh, for a movie, wow, it was amazing. And I give a lesson to Andres to not run when he found a, a bear. Many old photos from those years. I was in the in the high school from during this photo during this photo. Sometimes driving, sometimes yes in the back. These are aspens, quacking aspens in Tierra del Tigre. This is Paral Chick. This is my first tent. I'm, I'm trying to get out from this. I was around 11 here. I was, uh, it was the, the first time I said, I set it up. I used to get into caves. Uh, I don't now. It's a coral snake. Spring summer. During college, field trips. You know, we ate the world, but we're still eating Gerber. Getting a bearded party in the field. I like to photo flowers. I love them. This Jeep has spent many times. <laughs> this time it was when I must fix the, the carburetor in the field. This forest in Canania with the a local mechanic. I didn't know that we have a that amount of uh, ocelots in the field. It's very common to get these guys. It's more easy that you saw a jaguar in the field than uh, an ocelot. They're very, wow, they're phantoms. Black bears, these guys are who? Hmm. 
Dice, sí, en Sierra de Guachinera. This project is a presence, absence, so we use bait to call them, to see if they are in the, in the area. Uh, now we're gonna, very soon we're gonna start a project with a uh, jaguar. Uh, we, we're, we're gonna follow a, a protocol because we're gonna yeah, do it in, in several sky islands in the region um, by different organizations. So we must use uh, uh, the same protocol. Well, chicks, ocelots, ocelots. It's very, very interesting. When I was in, in, in Sierra Los Ajos, I, very often I, I, I went with the monitoring guys to do the job. I used to, to be in the field. I like the action. Uh, you can see me giving environmental talks in the schools. I used to be in, 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 the, in the fires, in the wildfires. I get trained uh, in firefighting and fire ecology. Uh, I have good level on, on that. And I used to be in, in the field during the fires when I was director also. Before we get uh, the emergency funds, I use my credit card to, to start the, the, the fight with uh, the guys from the preserve, with the staff. On the, the funds arrived, so I get reimbursed. Many times, the, actually nobody do, does uh, do that in, 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 in Ajos. And also, as, as I told you, I, I try to to join the monitoring guys in, in, in the preserve, and we get a lot of uh, nice records. As I told you, jaguars, in, uh, three jaguar records in Sierra Los Ajos, Sierra La Madera, inside the preserve. But now that I am now as a an independent consultant. Um, working with Profound and Graded Good at our, uh, collaborating with the Sky Island Alliance, Watershed Management Group. Uh, we're doing a lot of monitoring. With Graded Good, we're, you, I'm managing 400 cameras. With uh, Sky Island, we're gonna use around 15. With uh, Borderlands uh, Initiative, uh, we're gonna use around 40. and we're getting a lot of records, a lot of records. We're setting cameras all in, in, the, in all the Sky Island, in all the Sky Island in the region, and we're getting great, great records. For example, we, we, we get black bears in, in we already set, set off uh, the cameras in Sierra Los Locos, and we decide that we're gonna set cameras again. We get, on, uh, we review the, the cameras, we get black bears, Yes, in, in, on the desert. <laughs> Blackberry, jaguar, also a lot, uh, a lot of pumas, a lot of uh, javelinas, and many other species, the, the common species for the region. But uh, what, I, what we're getting is uh, not worthy records. As, for example, uh, white uh, javelina in, in Chinega Saracachi, a jaguar here, there, everywhere. Uh, I didn't think we have a, that amount of jaguars. Look at this photo. In <clears throat> one ranch, we get the three different jaguars. Um, we, we're getting records, we're getting fours, we're getting uh, schools from jaguar, from cougar, from everything. The answer that the people get confidence with you, they give you a lot of things. Uh, when you're on the government, they don't trust you. You know, uh, this guy's gonna kick me once uh, I give something. But we're getting a lot of things. Once we are as a independence.
we have some beautiful photos. As I told you, we have a, ah, in the last two and a half years, we made around 560,000 photos on with these uh, trade cameras. So you can imagine the, the uh, how do you say, the headache, <laughs> trying to ID what you have in those photos. You can have a camera with 12,000 photos. You can have a camera with 200 photos. And you can have a camera with 800 uh, photos, but with uh, from those 800, you have, I don't know, 700 wildlife uh, species records. So you spend three days re 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 review, reviewing this camera, and you spend one day uh, reviewing a, a 17,000 photos camera because something grow in, in one corner and was moving uh, a little tick, twig, or maybe cows, plenty of cows and we uh, run the, 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 the place. So it's very common. Look this, we have a lot of uh, herb records. It's supposed that they, they are cold blooded and we have a, a lot of also snakes. In, in the trail cameras. Black bears, black bears. I love black bears. I, I prefer these guys, jaguars. Also, we start setting cameras. They start coming and coming and coming. We have several, several jaguar records in different mountain ranges, sky islands uh, in, in the region. This is from Sierra Batamote, north is from Sierra Mazatan, uh, south from Uris town. We also have a records in Sierra Mazatan, so it's, and we're using a, a program, uh, we're collaborating with a Northern Jaguar project, uh, Carmina Gutierrez, she has a program to, to ID Jaguars. Uh, we, we, we send the photos and she said, uh, if uh, this uh, every Jaguar has been seen in, in every other uh, places, uh, they use the, the full pattern uh, to, to ID Jaguars. And the same for ocelots or spotted cats. This is another guy. I prefer, I still, we, we're using a steel wild view and uh, Kudubak. I prefer Kudubaks. It has more, uh, more clear photos uh, during night. It's a wild view. Look this, this is a nice photo, but the last one, oh, this is a guy enjoying the, the spot. Look this. Is the same spot. This one in, in, during night. I don't like the night uh, wild view photos, but I I like day photos. And um, this is just uh, something that uh, I, I I was trying to to show you. Uh, Sky Island region it has a lot to offer to to, to the uh, academy to the field lovers, those who like to hike, to camp in the field. Uh, it could be very dangerous, but if you get in the area, like the water with confidence, you, 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 you don't get any, any trouble. Uh, many people look for me, uh, to guide them, a guy from Florida, a guy from uh, Utah, a guy from Montana, California, from Europe. Uh, and I told them, you don't need me. You just need to get into the field and talk with the locals. 
local will help you. Uh, Sonorans are very, very uh, hospitalary. Hospit I don't know if it's the word hospitalary people. Hospitalaria is, is the word that I want to use in Spanish, but uh, they like, uh, they offer you something. If you're in trouble, they help you. If you need water, they give you water. If you're hungry, they feed you. So be confident. Um, come and visit the Sky, uh, the sky Island in Sonora. Uh, if they're a fight, just be uh, use common sense and move away. And I think is is that's all for for now. Hope. Uh, You like the talk, my talk? That's all. Thank you. Almost oh. an hour. <laughs> That's all right. Any question? We... I, 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 I'm happy to answer. Thank you, Mario. Thanks a lot uh, for all those wonderful pictures. Uh, yeah, if uh, we have some questions in the chat. Mario, you hear me? Yes, yes. No, this is Bill Shaw. Um, I have to run to another meeting, but I just wanted to say thank you and how great it was to, to see that you actually survived. <laughs> I remember <laughs> when we worked together, you were young and macho, and I kept telling you, don't go into the narco-traficante areas. And you said, I know the people. I always smart. And you obviously were, because here you are. So... Great work and keep it up. And and I have to run to another meeting, but it's wonderful to see you. Thank you, Bill. Nice to see you. Hope to see you soon. Yes. In person. So Sorry, Mario, 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 there was another question about whether Arizona cypress only grows in one mountain range. Yeah, Sierra San Luis. It's supposed that there there's two or three individuals in the Sierra uh, Sierra El Tigre on the east and in the east uh, slope, and there are some in. It's supposed that in Mesa the Tres Rios area, but this is uh, Sierra Madre. That, that that species belongs to Sierra Madre. That's the reason because it's not a uh, spread in, in in the whole Sky Island. Got it. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And then there was another question about what type of software you're using to analyze all of your camera data, all of these photographs that are coming in. Do you have any tricks for simplifying the process? Uh, now uh, I'm trying. Uh, a guy is trying to get an artificial intelligence uh, software to help us with the process. I'm, I, I'm passing all, all the filter uh, records that we have now. So he's uh, making a program to, to, I don't know how to explain. All the first that we said to this guy, he's gonna use it to establish a program to, in the future, once you pass a photo, a wildlife photo, it's gonna ID the who, what is, by color, by form, by uh, all that kinds of parameters. Right. Yeah, hopefully technology will help us. Yeah. <laughs> all of yeah. us we all get so many photos. Um, yeah, we're spending a lot of time uh, reviewing photos. Mm -hmm. so they had each of uh, these tools. Right. Okay, there's uh, one more question and it's talking about um, an impression that often ranchers might um, not like Jaguar on their property. And just how do you talk with ranchers about Jaguars and do you encourage them um, to take steps for conservation. I used to talk, I, I use 
uh, the ground. I use stones to, to show them, to teach them uh, the relationship between predator prey. Uh, I try to, for example, if they have problems with a uh, uh, mountain lion, a mountain lion is killing me, I don't know, 14 calves. Well, I ask them, how many deer do you have? How many javelina? Well, all the hido land, all the hido guys get into the land and they hunt every every time. So well, I told I told him, well, what are you doing? Well, I, I'm killing all the mountain lions. Well, you're allowing all the dispersed mountain lions in the area get into your land because it's empty. A mountain lion is very territorial, very territorialist. Mm -hmm. And it has two or three females. If you kill the dominant male, it's gonna be a empty territory. So many males will come trying to get that territory. So you will have five or seven uh, mountain lions that were as, uh, put it away by the dominant males to this area. And I try to explain them the same with Jaguar. If they have a, a food, they, they, if they have their prey, natural prey, deer, javelinas, uh, skunks, uh, mountain lion loves skunks. You know, if the mountain lion is surrendering around you, is walking around you, if you smell a uh, skunk, and if you don't see the skunk, there's a mountain lion following you. Of course, of that. Yikes! Good to know. <laughs> uh, yeah, really. Uh, if you if if you smell a, a, a skunk, you from the skunk, and it try to spray you. And that's the reason because the smell. But if you smell very softly, and you don't see the skunk. Oh, you're in trouble. <laughs> you you could be in trouble. He's, he's following you. He's watching what are you doing in, in his territory. That's a great tip. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The same with bear. If you saw a bear, don't run. They run 35 kilometers per hour. You run 18. They can uh, do that during a half hour. You can do it uh, during 70 seconds. So the, the bear will reach you, uh, yeah. I, I bet for that. The um, thing what you will do with a bear is from him, put your hands up and don't see directly to their eyes, to his eyes. Just do this, a little uh, three quarter sighting and put your hands up, you're, you're gonna be bigger. And the bear will understand that you're bigger and he could suffer more damage than you. So he will turn up and go away. Unless you're not very big. <laughs> Unless you can. Unless you're short like me. Um, <laughs> no, just put your hands up. You're gonna be bigger. Uh, Mario, there's, I think there's uh, probably time for a well, there's some more comments. Great to see you again, Mario. Amazing pictures and story. Um, they're, they're thinking very much. Um, and, oh, well, I think that was uh, the last question. I don't know if there's, we have time for something else, but, or if anyone has so many comments. This was a wonderful presentation. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, we'll see Mario again in a couple of weeks, November 12th, with, uh, along with Antonio. Uh, it will be a, a different different subject, as I was saying, but please join us uh, to learn more about conservation in the Upper San Pedro watershed, um, which is such an important ecosystem for the Skyland region. Um, Mario, thank you very much for uh, showing us all the all the pictures, all sharing all their stories. Um, and if you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach to Mario. Uh, I don't know if we have his email here, but uh, Mario, can you? J-M-C-I-R-E-T-T dot hotmail.com. Here you go. I'm typing it right now. 
in the chat box. So feel free to reach out to Mario if you have any questions yeah. or comments. You're, you're welcome. All right, everybody. Uh, thank you so much for joining. Uh, have a great rest of the week. And uh, we look forward to seeing you again soon. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mario. Thank you, Paulo. Bye, Lee. Bye, Bye, John. Thank you. Emily. Hasta luego. Hasta luego.